For months, I have been seeing videos from other creators digitally cataloging their wardrobes. And every time I go, God, that would be so useful. I should really do that. And then continue just like sitting on my couch. But this week, I'm finally doing it. And I am so excited to bring you along with me for the process. Let's get a little more comfortable, shall we? Let's take a seat. First, let me explain a little for anyone who is not familiar, what is digitally cataloging or digitizing your closet? Basically, it's taking a photo of each clothing item in your wardrobe. I just used my phone and then uploading them all into a wardrobe cataloging app. I am using Index because it has a particular special feature that we will talk about more in a little bit. Once you upload items to the app, you can log certain information about each piece of clothing, size, color, material, cost, brand, etc. And then you can look through all your clothes at once, plan outfits, or track what you wear. I mean, I think there are even more things you can do, but those are the main purposes I have in mind. I have been wanting to do this for so long for so many reasons. Firstly, it just seems like such a practical way to keep better track of my wardrobe. So I'll always know exactly what I own and whether I really need another poofy white blouse, for example. And I'll also know what I don't own, so I can easily identify wardrobe gaps and what new pieces would actually be worth getting that would serve my wardrobe really well. I am also extremely excited by the outfit planning aspect of digitizing my wardrobe. Literally before I would like write down random outfit ideas in my notes app on my phone, which <laughs> A, uh, was extremely chaotic and disorganized, and B, just didn't always work out that well without being able to actually see the pieces I was envisioning. So being able to actually visualize the outfits with photos and to see all the options in my closet when planning an outfit just feels like it will multiply my outfit planning powers by like a hundred. I also cannot wait to start the tracking element where I can actually document what I wear each day and therefore document how often each piece in my closet gets worn, track the cost per wear, notice any patterns in which types of pieces tend to get worn more and which ones just kind of sit in the back of my closet. As someone who loves both mindful fashion and data, this might be life-changing for me. Finally, I have an extremely exciting reason to catalog your wardrobe with Index in particular. With Index, you can hire a virtual personal stylist to put together outfits for you using your wardrobe of clothes you already own. And as of today, that stylist can be me. You guys, I'm literally so stoked about this. I am now available to create lookbooks of 10 outfits styled personally for you using your existing wardrobe. There will also be tips. There will be notes. There's a little questionnaire about what you're looking to get out of your lookbook. I'm just so excited about this. I truly love styling other people. My sisters would definitely confirm that. <laughs> and I've also had a lot of you ask me before for help styling certain pieces or providing personal styling services. So I'm just so excited to now be able to offer them. Obviously, Obviously, you do not need a personal stylist to look and feel great in your clothes. But if this sounds worthwhile for you and your lifestyle and your budget, I would absolutely love to style you. And if you would love to be styled by me, not only can you book right now at the link in the description, but you can also enter my giveaway. Hi, this is Liz from the future. I decided to save the giveaway entry rules for the end of the video. Stay tuned for that to come. First, let's just go over the basics. What's the best format for these photos? For index, they recommend that you take them laid flat from directly above. I just put mine on the floor and then the background is automatically removed. So you have this beautiful, clear, clean image of each piece. This honestly kind of makes it feel like online shopping when you're using the app, which is just so smart because it gives you that same excitement and sense of inspiration you get from scrolling a shopping app, but with the clothes you already own. To get those nice clear images, I also did this during hours with bright natural daylight, and I tried to take the time to smooth things out, pick off lint, and position clothing nicely, we'll talk more about positioning in a bit, so that it would look its best in the photos. Part of making the digital wardrobe an exciting, inspirational experience, I think, is having photos that make you go, that's cute, I want to wear that, and not, yikes, that shirt is in bad shape, you know? So yes, taking a moment to primp does take a little extra time, but I truly think it was so worth it to have nice photos that make me feel excited about my clothes. That said, I would also like to say that done is better than perfect. So making the clothing look the best you can in the moment is great, but you also do not have to dedicate hours to like steaming or ironing everything you own. For example, I of course had some items that were slightly wrinkled, but like, that's how t-shirts are. I don't mind that reality being in the photo. I simply wasn't going to take the time to get out my iron. I'm sorry. And any pieces that did look just like 
a little too shabby in the photos. This was mostly things I had to take out of my dirty laundry to photograph. I just retook the photos later after they had gone through the wash and looked a little smoother. Overall, I really just tried to strike that balance of making things look as good as I could in the moment, but not fussing too much about it being perfect. Now, some more notes on the positioning of the clothing. Before filming this, I actually watched some other wardrobe cataloging videos specifically to prepare and see if there were any useful tips out there. And I actually learned a ton of great pointers from Christina Maicha's video. So sorry if I'm pronouncing Maicha's wrong, which completely coincidentally was actually also done with Index's help. I'll link that video in the description too, if you're interested. The biggest tip I got from that video is to tuck in the armpit seams on pieces with sleeves and the crotch seams on pants. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here and understand what I mean by that. It just makes the clothes lay smoother and it also helps them lay more how they actually would on your body. Like for example, with this item, uh, tucking in the armpits allows the sleeves to point downward, resting at the sides of the shirt rather than sticking straight out. This is also a great way to um, hide your pit stains on all your shirts, so win-win. Another positioning choice I made was to arrange each piece how I was most likely to wear it. So for example, this cardigan is really big and baggy and I only ever wear it open. So I positioned it open. But for my other cardigans, I often wear them at least partially buttoned up. So I positioned those ones closed. And for some, I wear them both ways. So I tried to take photos of them sort of partially buttoned, but still partially open. So hopefully it will like unconsciously remind my brain when I see the photos that I can wear it open or buttoned. Hey y'all, so I'm about a third of the way through this process. That's that's a generous estimate. But I just did all my dresses and now I'm looking back at the photos and I'm just not quite happy with them. I don't think the dresses are accurately represented in the photos. These four specifically are very wide and loose and so on me, they sort of hang at the sides, but in the photos, they just look super wide in a way that makes them look much shorter than they actually are. I hope that makes sense. Basically, the way they lay on the floor and the way they lay on my body are different. And in the pictures, I want them to look the way they would lay on my body. So we're gonna re-photograph these and I'm gonna tell you if I have any good tips. Okay, great news. The tip is easy. I just scrunched up the dresses a little. To be more specific, I scrunched them up horizontally, but not vertically so they just look a little more drapey. Here you can see the first photo I took of each dress versus the second, and it's funny looking at them side by side, it's really not that they look better in the second photos, but they just look more accurate to how they hang on my specific body. So having them photographed like that will best serve me in my digital wardrobe needs. I will say doing this all myself was a little tiring, but what helped me a lot was actually doing it in a couple sittings across a couple days. Most of what I filmed was on one day, but doing it across multiple days made each individual session way more manageable. Also like, of course this is a little tedious, but it honestly didn't actually take that long. I would say it moved pretty fast. Like I had a lot of things to take pictures of, but each little category in my closet of like dresses, pants, t-shirts, etc did not take very long. If you are a busier person than me, many people are, you could totally split this up over even more days and just do small batches each day, even just like 10 or 20 items a day, and you'll be done before you know it. All right, we are finally onto shoes and other accessories, and all these different types of items required different sort of strategies and tips to photograph them, so I'm just gonna go through the keys to success for all of these photos in rapid fire. For shoes, I took the photos on a stool so I could take them straight on from the side. I wanted them all facing right just for continuity, but for any pairs where the left shoe looked better, like with the loafers that were a little dirty, try not to judge me, I just faced the shoes the opposite way and then flipped the photo in editing. For any taller boots that didn't stay up on their own, I just stuck a couple socks inside to give it back that shape. For hats, I also used the stool to take the photo straight on, and to give them the right shape that they have on my head, I just stuffed a balled up t-shirt inside each one to keep it from sagging. For scarves, I didn't want to drape them in just one particular way because there are a lot of ways to wear a scarf, so I just folded them into long rectangles so when I inserted the photo into an outfit I'm planning in the app, I can imagine styling it however I want, not just the one way it's depicted in the photo. Sometimes, even accessories in the same category had to be photographed in different ways. For example, structured leather belts were done up and set on the stool, while this floppy chain belt had to be arranged on the floor because it can't hold itself up. 
Jewelry was probably the easiest category because it's so small I could take the photos straight on at the table instead of on the floor. And glasses may have been the trickiest category because I didn't want the wood grain of the stool to be visible in the lenses, so I set them up on the stool and took the pictures as straight on as possible so the only visible background behind the lenses would be the blank wall. Just laying out some plain white fabric over your surface would also work great. I feel like maybe I should have just done that. Speaking of which, my last item was this hat that has a neck ribbon that meant it would have a much bigger background area, so I draped this blanket over the stool for this one so the tie could hang down and the whole background would still be removed. Hi friends! I've just finished taking the final pictures every single item in my wardrobe has been photographed. I've also gone through and just cropped all the images in. I've adjusted the color grading, making some of them lighter or darker or warmer to more accurately reflect what the item looks like in real life. And now I'm ready to catalog, baby. Let's upload my first item. Choose photo, photo from library. Let's start with this vest. Looks perfect. It automatically removes the background, which is great. What brand? I don't really care about the brands of my clothing, so I'm just gonna skip through these. Kind of same with sizes. Sizes could be useful if it's hard to tell from the picture if something is like oversized or more fitted. Writing down the size might help with that, but I already have a sense of all those things. I did note the color is blue. What category? I guess it is a top and then vest. Okay, and there it is. Beautiful. Now I believe I can go click on the item and then go into edit, and then I can add more notes. So I can say what material it's made of. I'm not actually sure for this vest, but you know me, I'm very picky about materials, so that is useful. And then if I go in to the little graph symbol for like tracking, I can also note when I bought the item, how much I bought it for, whether it's secondhand or not, which for me is super useful because most of my wardrobe is secondhand. And it's great to keep track of how much wear you get out of things. I also wanna make sure anything I have got firsthand, I'm getting a lot of wear out of. So in here I can track the price and how often I've worn it. And so it will tell me my cost per wear over time as well. So now I'm just gonna take some time to catalog all my other clothes <laughs> and uh, I'll get back to you when the process is completed. This is also something I did in multiple sittings whenever I had some free time and I actually got it done much quicker than I expected. It helped that, again, like with the photos, I was trying to avoid perfectionism and just focus on getting the pieces uploaded so I could start tracking and styling with them. So if that's your goal too, don't worry too much about filling in every detail. That said, I do want to go back and add certain information. I skipped the brands initially, but I do think noting the brands of my favorite pieces, even secondhand, could be helpful for future thrifting. Like I said, I also find materials super important so I'd like to add those and I'm not going to go back and add cost and number of wares for anything I already have because frankly I have no idea but for anything I bring into my wardrobe from now on I will add the cost and I have also already started tracking number of wares for everything in my wardrobe starting a couple days ago. It's been a week or two since I started this whole process. Everything in my wardrobe has been logged and I've started putting together some new outfit ideas in the app. Honestly, I've been unable to resist putting together outfit ideas. It's become like my new impulse phone activity instead of doom scrolling. Much healthier habit, much more productive and useful, and I'm genuinely having so much fun. Throughout the day, I'll just be like struck with inspiration and then be like, ooh, let's make a little outfit. So I have a bunch of ideas and now I want to put them to the test and see if they all translate in real life as I envisioned them. So let's start with this one. I rarely wear this sweater or this jacket. I tend to just forget that I have them in my wardrobe, but then seeing them both laid out as I was scrolling through the app, I was like, wait a minute, these are two really cool pieces and would go great together. So they inspired the whole rest of this outfit and let's see how it looks. Here's the complete outfit. I love this. It feels very much me, something I would wear on a regular casual everyday occasion or non-occasion, but just like a little more thoughtful, a little more elevated because it is more thoughtful. I planned it out in advance and I looked through all my options and all my accessories and thought to add things like this headband that I think is really cute, but I just always forget that I have. I want to like put these sunglasses up so I can look you in the eyes when I talk to you, but I can't really have the sunglasses and headband at the same time. I guess maybe that's a flaw of this outfit, but I can just put these 
in the tote bag that I conveniently added. Seeing this tote bag in the app also made me so much more excited to style it and use it. I feel like I've had this forever and all these pins are just like random ones I've collected over the years. A lot of them are from college, from like random art events. I recently had to patch it up because it got some holes in it. So I kind of think of this as like my raggedy old thrifting tote that I just bring when I need like a lot of space to put stuff in. But then seeing it in the app with no context presented to me anew, I was like, this bag is so cool and cute. If I saw this on Pinterest, I would be like, oh, I want that bag. And it's like, bet you already own that bag. It's right here. So feeling great about this just feels like so cool and kind of effortless, but also styled and stylish at the same time. Kind of my dream aesthetic for any, any scenario where I need clothes, which is almost all scenarios in life. Next, I want to try this one. This again was inspired by a piece I rarely use, but then saw with fresh eyes in the app, this ruffled tote bag that I sewed myself. I always just forget that I have this. Are we sensing a pattern here? I've also been feeling very inspired lately by the double bag look that Coach did on a recent runway. So I thought it would be really cool to add my little fortune cookie bag with the tote bag. And then the rest, I wanted things that felt like they matched sort of the whimsy of the bags, but were also simple enough to sort of let the bag shine in this outfit. So let's see how it translates. I feel so whimsical in this outfit. I feel like a little storybook character. I feel like I live in a, a village on a mountainside next to like a big dark forest that may contain a mysterious beast. This outfit has me world building. I love it. I absolutely love this little double bag thing with this tied on here with a ribbon. I think it looks so cute. Is it useful? No, this isn't holding anything. It's just for decoration, but that's what half of fashion is, right? Jewelry is just for decoration and we love it. It's like jewelry for the bag. I love how the rest of this simple outfit works with the bags. It was kind of what I envisioned. We have like a little sense of whimsy, but still keeping it pretty simple so as not to like be visually overwhelming. I love this. It's also very comfy. And again, this is an outfit I never would have come up with if I hadn't been scrolling through every option in my wardrobe and looking at them all sort of with fresh eyes. I think it could be improved or done up even more maybe with some jewelry, but I also think it really works like this, just simple. Yeah, this is another roaring success. Finally, I wanna try this outfit. Very casual, very wearable, but quite funky. This came from me looking at this rugby shirt and thinking I would like to style it with something red on the bottom. But I was like, Ugh, I don't have any red pants. And then I thought, Liz, use index, look at all your red bottoms. And of course I was reminded that I have this red skirt. So that was the base pairing. The rest grew from there. Once again, I do feel like we're slaying. I love this shirt and this skirt together. The vest adds another little layer. Honestly, I would also wear this without the vest. I like it both ways. It's giving like funky retro collegiate, but like a TV show or cartoon character version. That's like a little more colorful and fun. Once again, I, I can't put the sunglasses up, but I can put them in my bag. And again, this bag, which I just normally never think of as like a styling option. It's more of a practical option, but I've just been appreciating it so much more. I love it with this outfit. It definitely plays into the whole like funky collegiate thing too. All right, y'all, those I would say were great successes. I am just feeling so enthused about this whole thing. And now I'm even more enthused to tell you the rules of the giveaway. If you would like a chance to win a free personal style lookbook from me, all you have to do is one, be subscribed to my channel, two, have an index account. You can use this QR code right here to download the app and make an account right now. Then number three, tell me your index username in a comment on this video. Comment can be about anything you want. Just make sure you also leave your username. And condition number four, have the items that you want me to have access to, to style you, uploaded in your account by the time I choose a winner one week from now on Sunday, March 31st. That's it. Those are all the conditions. I will announce the winner in a community post here on my YouTube channel and then Index or I will also reach out privately to you via email using the email address associated with your Index account. Oh, also, if you know you want a lookbook regardless of the giveaway, you can book right now at the link in the description and then you can still enter the giveaway if you want and if you win, you'll be 
be reimbursed and get it for free. With that, thanks so much for coming on this wardrobe cataloging journey with me. I'm also definitely planning to track my outfits in here continuously. So if you'd want a whole video on that experience, let me know in the comments because I would totally do that. Again, if you're interested in my personal styling services, you can book a lookbook right now through the link in the description. And I will also add this link to the description of every video from here on out. So if you're ever looking for it in the future, you can find it there. Also put it in like my link tree, my Instagram bio. Thanks so much for watching. If you leave a comment, watch another video, like maybe this one, about my capsule wardrobe experience last year. If you liked this video, you might like that video. And subscribe to my channel. I heard cataloging your wardrobe will make you feel satisfied with the wardrobe you have forever. And you'll never want to shop for new clothes ever again. <laughs>